I want to welcome you this third Sunday of Advent as we um, continue our ecumenical series um, exploring for such a time as this. Um, we've got a couple of announcements I want to make sure you are aware of. So um, this is a great time for you as we're doing announcements to keep listening, but prepare your um, communion if you like to take communion, also your Advent candles. Advent candles will come up a little bit earlier in the service, so just make sure you've got those on hand, close by, um, and you'll need three candles, and you'll need some matches or whatever you're going to use to light it. So you can go old school, flint and tender. That might take a while, but, you know, it's your life. Um, we still have a, a little bit of um, money um, in the grant we received to offer food assistance to people who need it. So if you need something, please let us know um, and let us know what grocery uh, store you'd like your cards um, from and we'll make sure that we get that for you. Um, again, just all you're going to need to do is, um, and you can ask for other people as well, um, and we'll do the best we can. So um, I think we won't have fiber arts this week because um, I'm still in the training that I'm doing. So um, sorry about that. I do apologize, um, but we will have choir practice this week. So speaking of choir, um, a couple of other announcements that aren't, aren't on our board. Um, we are doing worship service, our Christmas Eve worship service with Union this year. Um, it didn't really make sense to be doing services apart when we could be doing services together since we are all online. Um, and so we are doing our an ecumenical, well, I guess then this is just a joint worship service. Um, so one of the things that you need, know, need to know about that, um, nothing's really going to change except we are doing a virtual choir. So if you would like to be a part of the virtual choir, um, there is one song that we're going to be singing all together. Um, and one of their members, Robert, is putting that choir together. Um, and this is a lot of work. <laughs> so um, there's a recorded track and everything to sing along with. And if you'd like to submit a video, um, which is preferable, of yourself singing for the virtual choir, please um, let me know. I will send you the instructions. They've in included everything. So how to set up the video, everything you're going to need to set up your video all of the details and everything you're gonna need um, and also where to submit it um, and how the video should look. So um, if you need some help um, figuring that out, please um, feel free to email me, but I promise it's in the directions as well. But I really encourage you to do it. The only caveat is you need to have it in by 5 p.m. tomorrow. So um, if you wanna be a part of that, send me a quick email. I'll shoot you everything you're gonna need to know from that. Um, we will be having, this is a surprise, but we'll be having a, like a, it'll take 15 minutes, a special church conference, which not even I knew that we needed to do this only because, um, the numbers that we had on our, like for the housing exclusion weren't correct. Um, which we're really grateful that Matt pointed that out. So we have to technically vote the correct numbers. Um, we're gonna have, it'll take max 15 minutes. We'll do that at 6 p.m. on Thursday. Um, so it's a little bit before choir. So hopefully, if you can't join, it's not a big deal. Um, it's just formalizing the numbers that we had. We just have to get it approved. I found out from we, who is our DS. So I am, <laughs> I do apologize. We didn't have the correct numbers, but we have to vote as a church on the correct numbers. So just letting you know, um, I'll be sending out more information about that as well um, later today, if not Monday. So just letting you know about that. And um, oh, and really great news. We have received two grants. Woot, woot. Um, so uh, I think one of them I might have mentioned before, but we've received the um, another grant from the Beacon Hill um, Association. Um, and that is going to help the um, food storage situation at um, for the food forest and for the Monday night dinner. So it's going to set up freezer and electrical work. We've also received grant funding um, again from the CPA Henderson, Henderson not CBA Henderson Fund. So I think that's forty thousand dollars, which is great. 
Um, so we're really, really excited about receiving both of those grants. It's been a big year for us for receiving grants. Um, the Henderson will go towards um, the renovation as well. So those are the announcements we have. And so we're going to shift into um, our time of worship. Um, and we can talk more about um, uh, we can talk more about the grants after worship. So um, with that in mind, I just invite you into a spirit of worship and um, a spirit of prayer. And um, again, if you have any questions, make sure you write them down. We can always talk more about them after service. Um, but again, happy Gaudet Sunday, which is the third Sunday of Advent. Um, and I invite you to join me in our call to worship in your own homes. In those days before the final coming of Christ in glory, there will be mighty signs. There will be witness, they will be witnessed to in heaven and on earth. The time in his coming and is yet now to respond to the prophet's call. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. We are witness to such a time, a time of great anticipation. Therefore, let our hearts be glad and our souls rejoice. Let us prepare the way for such a time as this. Our first hymn is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Um, and so if you are leading this hymn, I invite you to unmute yourself and to um, lead us in our first song. Come thou long expected Jesus, Lord, to set my people free from our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee, Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom bring, by thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts alone, by thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. Thank you so much, Patricia. Our responsive reading today comes from the Psalms. And Kate, I'm wondering if you would lead us in our responsive reading. Sure enough. When the everlasting God changed Zion's circumstances for the better, it was like we had been dreaming. Our mouths were suddenly filled with laughter. Our tongues were filled with joyful shouts. It was even said at that time among the nations, the sovereign has done great things for them. Yes, our God has done great things for us and we are overjoyed. Holy One, change our circumstances for the better, like dry streams in the desert waste. Let those who plant with tears reap the harvest with joyful shouts. Let those who go out crying and carrying their seed come home with joyful shouts, carrying bales of grain. Thank you so much, Kate. Today we light the third Advent candle, the candle of faithfulness. Waiting is never easy. In a season of expectation, as our excitement grows, we know the kind, we know that kind of waiting can come with delight as well. Yet there is also waiting with dread, waiting for news that has yet to come. There is waiting with exhaustion, knowing that you might never receive what you so long for that justice continues to be denied or delayed. Waiting is never easy. This week, we remember Elizabeth's waiting. 
and her faithfulness in her expectation and in her waiting. The faithfulness does not make the waiting any easier. Yet we know that we are not ever alone in our waiting. God is with us and God is faithful. Let us pray. It is with great expectation that we come to you, mighty everlasting God. Each of us is known by you, beloved by you. You know all our prayers, even those deep in our spirits, the ones we cannot express and the ones yet even unknown to us. Teach us to be like your servant, Elizabeth, faithful in our, in our anticipation of your own promised faithfulness. Comfort us in our waiting, strengthen us in our expectation and commit us to your faithfulness. Amen. Our scripture today is from the gospel of Luke and over the next two Sundays, we'll actually be splitting up this gospel um, as we explore it, um, the final two Sundays of Advent. So here is the first uh, part of the Lucan chapter that we'll read. During the rule of King Herod of Judah, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly, priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was a descendant of Aaron. They were both righteous before God, blameless in their obedience of all the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to become pregnant, and they were both very old. One day, Zechariah was serving as a priest before God because his priestly division was on duty. Following the customs of priestly service, he was chosen by lottery to go into the Lord's sanctuary and burn incense. All the people who gathered to worship were praying outside during this hour of incense offering. An angel from the Lord appeared to him, standing right to the right of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw the angel, he was startled and overcome with fear. The angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayers have been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give birth to your son, and you must name him John. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure of this? My wife and I are very old. And the angel replied, I'm Gabriel. I stand in God's presence. I was sent to speak to you and bring you good news. <laughs> know this, what I have spoken will come true at the proper time. But because you did not believe, you will remain silent, unable to speak until the day when these things happen. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and they wondered why he was in the sanctuary for such a long time. When he came out, he was unable to speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple for he gestured to them and could not speak. When he completed his days of priestly service, he returned home. Afterward, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant. She was kept by herself for three months saying, this is the Lord's doing. God has shown his favor to me by removing my disgrace among other people. When the time came for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a boy. Her neighbors and relatives celebrated because, with her because they had heard, the Lord, heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy. On the eighth day, it came time to circumcise the child. They wanted to name to name him Zechariah because that was his father's name. But his mother replied, no, his name will be John. And they said to her, none of your relatives have that name. Then they began gesturing to his father to see what he wanted to call them. After asking for a tablet, he surprised everyone by writing, his name is John. At that moment, Zechariah was able to speak again and he began praising God. All their neighbors were filled with awe and everyone throughout the Judean highlands talked of what happened. All heard, who heard about this considered it carefully. They said, what then will this child be? Indeed, the Lord's power was with him. Our sermon today comes from Alyssa Olson and she's the pastor of Good Shepherd and Lutheran in North Quincy. Um, and she will be, uh, leading us in our sermon as we explore Elizabeth and another saint as well. My name is Pastor Alyssa Olson. I'm the pastor of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, um, just south of Boston in North Quincy, Massachusetts. And I am so happy um, to be with you all today as part of this sermon series 
um, in this way. So Elizabeth and Zechariah, they were yes people. I think everyone knew they were yes people. It's what they were known for. A neighbor needed an extra cup of sugar? Yes. A stranger needed a place to lay their head for the night? Yes. A widow needed some extra coins to make it through the week? Yes. Did they know their prayers and say them um, several times a day? Yes. Did they know their scriptures forward and backwards? Yes and yes. Did they even follow the rules, like even the like very obscure ones? Yeah. And did they tithe? Of course, yes. Elizabeth and her husband, Zechariah, they were yes people. Both of them were righteous before God, our gospel reading from Luke says today living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. Elizabeth and Zechariah were yes people. That was until they became no people. You see, Elizabeth and Zechariah were pretty old. Their faces were surely marked with smile lines and wrinkles from being out in the sun for so many years and their hair was probably a good salt and pepper gray, if not completely white at that point. And they lived in a time when they were expected to have children, probably lots of children. And to not have them, which they didn't, it brought upon a lot of shame, especially for the woman. Elizabeth would have had to have dealt with the rumor, rumor mills and all the whispers behind her back as she walked through town. And she would have been the one that would have carried the heavy load of expectations from her people as she made her way through life. One day, Zechariah, being the righteous man he is, was taking his shift praying at the sanctuary with a group of men. And that day it was his turn to go into the sanctuary and offer up the incense to God. Now incense is burning it, you know, lets up a big cloud of smoke. Out of the smoke comes an angel, a messenger from God. And it takes Zechariah by surprise. Because of course, you know, is he talking angel? It would have taken me by surprise at least, and probably you too. And the angel has a message for Zechariah. God has answered their prayers. Elizabeth is going to be pregnant. And she's going to have a son. And his name will be John. To which Zechariah says, no. No, this can't be. No, we're way too old for this. This would be impossible for God to make happen. No. No, 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 no. No, I don't believe it. No. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, on the other hand, takes this message, embraces the pregnancy, embraces the fact that their son will be the one that helps prepare the way of a savior, which, you know, no big deal. He's just going to help prepare the way of a savior. Elizabeth embraces this message. She recognizes that this is an act of mercy from God, and she rejoices. Months later, she has the baby. And she and Zechariah, as is custom, they, they had to have the baby circumcised and to have it named. And her relatives and her friends all gather around for this joyous occasion and this celebration. And when it's finally time to give the baby the name, all the people assume, as is custom, that it'll take on one of the names of its relatives. 
In fact, um, they were pretty vocal about this. They let um, their assumptions be named uh, out loud. They, they think that the baby actually will be named after Zechariah, his father. To which Elizabeth, Elizabeth says no. No, he is to be called John. Elizabeth said no. She didn't just say it out of disbelief. And she didn't just say it to be defiant. She didn't just say it as like a big middle finger to all those that had made her feel ashamed for not having a baby for so many years. And she wasn't just disregarding tradition, throwing it out the window, just because she didn't like her husband's name or something like that. Now, I have to give a little bit of credit here to one of my um, dear friends. And um, like the church nerd I am, you know, she is dear because she listens to my like church nerd um, ruminations about texts that I'm having. And I said to her, you know, I'm just so struck by this no. No, he is to be called John. Like a woman saying no to a crowd in the Bible is a big deal. And my friend said to me, you know, her no sounds not so much like refusal. It sounds like a proclamation. It sounds powerful. And I think that's exactly it. Elizabeth's no was a proclamation. His name is to be John. It's already been decided. Like there's no need for follow-up questions, no need to ask her husband um, for permission of what the name will be or give her a list of reasons about um, something that Elizabeth already knew in her heart to be true. Her public declaration was said with confidence and without shame. Elizabeth's no was a proclamation of faith, of trust that God was fulfilling God's promises to the world. As a mother, she was letting the world know that her son this beloved child of God that was lying right in front of them was not going to be beholden to all their heavy expectations that the people were already trying to, you know, lay on his tiny little squishy baby body. But rather, he was to be named John. Elizabeth's no was a proclamation of faith. It was a proclamation of faith for the purpose of living out the gospel. Usually um, when I'm talking to families in the congregation or individuals preparing for baptism, I talk about the Christian life as being a series of yeses and nos. There are things we say yes to, like a God being a creative force like God valuing bodies and God acting through the Holy Spirit to bring about justice in the world. As Christians, we say yes to all of that. And we say no. We say no to evil. We say no to empty promises. We say no to things that aren't from God. Yeses and nos are both part of life. As Christians and usually I would imagine Christmas God coming into the world in the form of a tiny little baby in a manger that was just a mess a mess of a world a mess of a manger I usually imagine it as God's like big yes to us but today after hearing Elizabeth she has me wondering if maybe Christmas is not only God's like big yes for us, but maybe it's also God's big no to the world. No 
to all the world's expectations of how power should look. No to all the expectations that value tradition over caring for the most vulnerable. No to all the expectations that keep people from claiming who they truly are. No to all of that. No to sin. No to death. Elizabeth's bold and clear no to the people around her who made her feel shame and whose heavy expectations uh, were pressed upon her that she wasn't enough. It echoed again in the cries a few months later in a manger in Bethlehem. And I'd like to think that the little one John, who grew in Elizabeth's belly for nine months, and his little cousin, Jesus, learned a little bit about what ministry and faithfulness to God's word look like from their mom and their cousin Elizabeth. Advent, this season that we're in, it's a time for us to prepare to hear that big no. And if you're like me, I don't like to be told no. It's hard for us to be told no. And you know what? Those who are in power really don't like to be told no. Surely, as we'll find out later in the story, in the gospel, Herod and Caesar really don't like to hear no. But Elizabeth, bold, faithful, Righteous Elizabeth helps prepare us to hear that no, to say that no. She reminds us that a life of faith is having the courage to be both yes people and to be no people sometimes. Zechariah learns that from her, right? Thank goodness Zechariah learns that from her. The people around her, her family and friends learn that from her. And we, all of us, learn that from her today. And thanks be to God for that. Amen. Today is also uh, being Gaudet Sunday, um, the third Sunday of Advent, it also happens to fall on the festival of Santa Lucia or Saint Lucy, who brought food to Christians who were persecuted under Diocletian. And so um, as we light our Advent wreaths um, and our Advent candles, it's a lovely reminder of uh, the wreath of candles that Lucy supposedly wore in her hair so that she could carry as much food as she could in her hands um, to those Christians, those early Christians persecuted. Um, and Alyssa's sermon also um, reminds us of perhaps the words in Matthew when Jesus says, let your yes be yes and your no mean no. We have this example from Elizabeth of righteousness and faithfulness and boldness in her proclamations and in her prophecy and in her faithfulness. So this um, time of open space, I invite you to reflect on Alyssa's sermon on the faithfulness and the goodness and the yes, yes and the no's of Elizabeth. Um, we've got another icon created for us from Ross Johnson. Um, and our music this week actually comes from two groups um, two different churches, um, Zao MKE in Minneapolis and New City Church in, um, sorry, Zao MKE in Milwaukee and New City Church in Minneapolis created this music for this sermon series. Um, uh, so it's called O Light. And so I invite you during this time to reflect, um, to listen to this song and uh, to engage in a, a number of ways. You're invited to, of course, to reflect on the, um, the icon, but you're also invited to, um, you're also invited to write your, your prayer requests in the chat. 
Um, and you're of course invited to um, reflect on both the sermon and the scripture. If you need a reminder of the scripture, it's from Luke 1. Um, and so I invite you during this time to engage, um, pray, perhaps reflect with your Advent candles. Um, uh, so welcome into Open Space Church.
our practice at Old West is to um, continue our um, from open space into our prayers that we have been including. And so you still have time to include them in the chat. Um, and our practice is to begin that with the mass shootings that have happened in the last week. Um, and on, on top of the mass shootings that have happened, um, I invite us also to lift up um, the soul of Brandon Bernard, who was executed this past week um, by lethal injection. It's one of the first executions that the nation has sanctioned in many years. And it is my firm belief that the death penalty is abhorrent and is a sin. Um, and so I invite us to lift up um, all of those who um, have been uh, killed by state violence. Um, including that that is sanctioned, um, as we also lift up um, the cities and the states that have experienced mass shootings. Vaughn and Elsa, I invite you now to lead us. Kapayag, New York, one killed and three injured. Brooklyn, New York, four injured. Lacombe, Louisiana, two killed and three injured. Venus, Texas, six injured. Hayward, California, one killed and three injured. Otterville, um, Hayward, California, one killed, three injured. Otterville, North Carolina, six injured. God, you are our prayer. Pray strength for president and vice president elect as they assemble, the, assemble their teams and prepare to care for us all. God, God hear our prayer. prayer. A prayer for Eleanor, who has been home all week with fever and head pain. She's been tested with no result yet, and Sammy was tested as well. God, God hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Prayers for the last two weeks of this school semester. May they be safe and productive as we open more schools and welcome back many more students into our buildings. God, God hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all traveling this season, may they be safe and keep others safe in their travels. God, God hear our prayer. prayer. For all of us waiting for negative results of the COVID test. God, God hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May the vaccine be distributed quickly and effectively. God, God hear our prayer. prayer. Thanks for the continued generous support from the Henderson Foundation and the Beacon Hill Civic Association. God, God hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Thank you for blessings, prayers for peace throughout the whole world. God, God hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Blessings for the Patrick Hall family as they move to Portland, Oregon this week. God, God hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Prayers for the lonely. God, God, hear our prayer. Prayers for patience as we strive to keep our country and the world safe during the pandemic. God, God hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Prayers for those who have lost their jobs. May hope and faith burn bright. God, God hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Thanks for the prayers for Julie's health and the results that showed no cancer recurrence. For God. Alan's dad, Charlie, as he awaits his test results. God, God hear, hear our, our prayer. Prayers of thanksgiving for our family friend, Paul, who is home from the hospital after fighting COVID. God, God hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And now I'm going to read the prayer for the third week of Advent. Oh God, we've done it again. We confess our uncanny ability to name the sins of others. We confess our preference for laying bare the weaknesses of those around us. We confess that the problem is always someone else's. The solution is always obvious 
and the reasons of others are just excuses for an action. Well, it sounds so petty when we say it. Really, God, it's amazing that you, why don't you? You never, it's hard to even say. The moat in the eye of another always, always is a sign of a log in our own. We see the weaknesses of others as a way of avoiding our own. We focus on the problems of others because it's so much easier than allowing you into our hearts. Oh God, help us. We believe, help our unbelief, close our lips as you did your servant Zacharias, that we may see your work in the lives of even our enemies. Give us joy and delight in our times of trouble that we may have a part in bringing your people back to you. Turn our hearts back to you and fill our thoughts. Let our worries about the problems and failings of others be a reminder to us to open our hearts to your searching spirit. Look within us, O God, so that the way we look without is pure. Compass us about with your presence so that when we doubt, we remember your name and grow calm. As you sent a miracle into the life of your servant Elizabeth, work within us in ways beyond our expectation. For surely your will for our lives exceeds our dreaming. Surely the work to which you call us is greater than our imagination. The time is coming, spirit of joy, when our mouths will be filled with laughter, when our tongues will break forth with joyful shouts. The great things you have done in our doing will become obvious to all people. You will establish your realm of peace for all people, built on a foundation of justice. As the stream makes a new course through the desert, send your spirit through our spirits, washing away our old ways of thinking and leaving fertile soil for new visions. Then we will rejoice as those who reap a harvest. Then we will sing a new song for you. Come, Jesus, come. Amen. Amen. We continue. Um, um, and now uh, I invite you to make sure that you've got your communion elements around you at some point, if you'd like to take communion. Um, and as we continue, um, we shifted from prayer um, into continuing that prayer. Um, the communion service begins with this prayer to God to um, listen to our prayers as if they are incense, as if they are like uh, what Zachariah burned, something that is inviting and pleasing to God um, to um, partake in. So I invite you to say these words in your own home. We cry out to you, Lord, come to us quickly. Listen to our voice when we cry out to you. Let our prayers come to you like incense. Let our uplifted hands be like an offering. Our eyes are on you, God. We take refuge in you. From nothing, you set into motion an unhurried sequence of events with John and with Christ, each one leading us to now. This people made in your image. And thankfully, you have remained just as an unhurried and, unpa and, and patient with us. You rescue us time and again from the rush of our own making, a rush that feels so evocative of the Christmas season. You ensure that we are never alone. You invite us to slow down and to experience all that is around us. And so we experience the joy of your creation at the coming of your child. And we join their unending song saying, Santo, 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 mi corazón te adora, mi corazón de tape de cier, Santo eres Dios, sacred, wonderful, and holy one, you love us so much, you sent your child to be in the midst with us, to be incarnate, enfleshed in this world. In the midst of so much turmoil and uncertainty, Christ took time, created community, and called each follower by name to be healed, renewed, and transformed. On the night of Christ's arrest and execution, he took time to be present with some of those that he loved. 
each known to him by name. Some Jesus knew were scared, some were tired, some would, of course, betray him, run and hide. But Jesus took the time anyway. He took some bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he shared it with his friends saying, take, eat and remember me. When the meal was over, Jesus took a cup and in doing the same said, as often as you drink of this, remember me. And because we, like those first disciples, find ourselves scared, tired, caught up in the rush of our own making and often ready to run, we remember Christ's example and Christ's offering for us so that we might offer ourselves through the mystery of the faith that we live. Christ, you died, are risen, and will come again. We await your kingdom come on earth when your peace and justice will reign. Now is the point of the service that we call the epiclesis, which is just a fancy church word for this blessing of the community elements. And here at Old West, even if we're not in the building, we have a certain core belief that each of us makes up the priesthood of all believers. And that we believe that as that priesthood, each of us serves with different gifts and graces, um, contributing to the body of Christ in a myriad of ways. And in that serving, you are ministering, you are pastoring, you are acting and fulfilling your priestly duty. And so as fellow priests, I invite you to raise your hands um, or and another, another symbol that is important, you know, fulfilling and important for you and bless your communion elements with me. Holy, gracious, courageous, and life-giving God, because we long for your liberation and thirst for your justice, we pray, send your spirit. Send your spirit on these gifts of bread and vine that they might be for us your broken heart and love outpoured for all your world. We pray that in sharing this meal together, we are nourished by your grace and yet remain hungry for your justice. So it is through love, with love and in love, by the imagination and courage of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, God, our creator and perfecter of our faith. And we find great encouragement in your child, Jesus, our sibling and our savior. And it is in their name that we pray, amen. And so in the spirit of that same sibling and savior Christ, we are bold to pray these words, eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, divine parent of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. And the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love now and forever. Amen. Church, now is a time where you uh, take your um, bread, whatever it is, cracker, muffin, cinnamon roll, um, and you take a piece, and that's called the fraction. And just like it is a fraction of that singular piece that you've started with, so you are a fraction of the body of Christ, yet still integral to making it up, making up that whole. And so no, just like this piece, you are necessary and you are worthy and loved and as a part of the body of Christ. So if you are with your, by yourself, I invite you to serve yourself, but if you're with others and they'd also like to participate, I invite you to serve. One of the things that I love about communion at home, I do miss communion in person a lot, but one of the things that um, I love about communion at home <clears throat> is that I'm choking on my saltine and sadly not Patricia's delicious bread, but the things I love is that it truly shows us how open the table is, that no matter who you are, what you believe, what you're struggling with, you are always fully welcome at the table of God. Um, and just like all of our tables, be they coffee tables, kitchen tables, dining room tables, our office desk, whatever we're using, so the table of God is open to all and there is space for all. 
Um, so that to me feels very evocative um, of the table that Christ sets for us in heaven. Our final hymn is Star Child. Um, we'll hear this from our Old West singers. Um, we'll receive our benediction. And then of course, we'll have our time for coffee hour and um, to check in. Will be a great time to hear more about the um, grants that we've received. And I have one announcement that I forgot that I'll give to you there as well. So Old West singers, I invite you to unmute yourself and lead us in our final hymn. Star child, earth child, go between of God. Love child, Christ child, heaven's lightning rod. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Sweet child, be child, no place left to go. Her child, do you child, no one wants to know. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Grown child, old child, memory full of years. Sad child, lost child, story told in tears. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Spared child, spoiled child, having wanting more. Wise child, faith child, knowing joy in store. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Hope for peace, child, God stupendous sign. Down to earth, child, star of stars that shine. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Thank you so much, Old West Singers. Y'all are such a joy. Appreciate you. Church, I invite you now to receive our benediction. Um, we are being sent forth in expectation and anticipation to prepare the way of the divine. We are called to be, called to be advocates in our waiting, in our asking, in our serving, undaunted by the world's expectations of us. Go forth in peace and justice. And may the peace of God and the faithfulness of Elizabeth always be with you. Church, I Amen. hope you unmute yourselves and to say our Alleluia is small, big, and in bigger. Recognizing that um, the small one's for you, the big one is for maybe those around you, and the larger one is for the whole world, including Montez, who is in Hawaii right now. So you better say it loud enough. Wow. So, Alleluia. Alleluia. I invite you to unmute yourselves. I'm going to stop recording and to check in with one another.